Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church. Uh, this is Preacher Edwin speaking. We're coming to you live right from the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church here in Athens, Georgia. We welcome you here in the auditorium. We welcome our listeners out in the radio listening audience. We want to wish every one of them a Merry Christmas, a happy and prosperous New Year. May God bless you in days that lie ahead. I was reading some time ago about these three morons trying to measure post, see how high it was. They had two or three fellows trying to hold it up straight, another one trying to measure it from the top to the bottom. A man came by and said, what are you fellows trying to do? They said, we're trying to find out uh, uh, how long this pole is we're trying to put up here. Uh, they, he said, well, why don't you lay the thing down on the ground and measure it, and you know uh, how, how long it is. He said, well, really, we're not trying to find out how long it is, trying to find out how tall it is. And so that's where it happens sometimes. And next Sunday morning, I'll be bringing my final message here at Northside, if God spares me to that time. Thirty-three and a half years ago, we organized this church. God has been with us as we organized some four independent missionary Baptist churches. And then uh, I've been 42 years on the radio here in Athens, 40 years daily and two years on Sunday. And I love my radio listening audience. Like the couple I referred to earlier, uh, been listening to me since they've been in the listening area. Many of you have. And we have hundreds out in the radio listening audience that get their Sunday morning spiritual food from the Northside Baptist Church. They worship with you. And it grieves my heart deeply to be able to, I mean, for having to give up uh, my Sunday morning radio program, but I can't keep the program very well without the church. But I'll be bringing my final message here next Sunday morning. I'm expecting a large attendance. Our visiting pastor and his wife will be in the audience next Sunday morning. Brother Ralph Arnold, his wife Betty, they'll be in the audience, maybe some of his people. We're having some business coming in next Sunday. I've had quite a few people say, Preach Edwards, now before you leave, I want to come and hear you in person again. Well, there may be a few this morning that did just that, but if you didn't, if you want to be with us in person for a final message, you be here next Sunday morning. Uh, we'll have a Sunday evening service at 6, of course, but I'll be doing some things that won't be preaching. We'll be uh, giving the church a little farewell talk and say a few things you need to hear. At the close of service next Sunday night, I turn the keys over to your new pastor, bid you farewell, and I'll be gone. Now, uh, I'm not leaving the ministry. Don't misunderstand me. I'll preach as long as I live, as long as I'm able. I spent almost 49 years in the ministry. I burned a lot of midnight oil preparing for the ministry that I might be able to preach. I have thousands of sermons, and uh, I have a uh, tape. I have over 500 cassette tapes that we tape here on Sunday morning. I have those more than 500. In fact, the tape that they have been, tape number 461, something happened to recorder last Sunday. I didn't get last Sunday's message on tape, and so the message today would be tape number 461, I'm going to speak today on the subject, God's gift in the manger, and uh, that'll be my message. You can write in and get the tape, say, Preach Edward, send me the message entitled God's gift in the manger, or tape number 461. I have 24 tapes on the 23rd Psalm. I have more than 500 in all, and you can still write in and get those tapes in the future. Uh, if you'd like to have a list of them, I'll be glad to send you a list. You just write in and say, Preach Edward, send me a list of your tape. If you'd like to have the tape today, enclose a gift of $3 or more and help to pay the expense, and we get it right in the, the mail to you. I'd like to continue my tape ministry if needed, and the only way you're going to know the number of tapes I have, the uh, 
uh, the titles of them and so forth is you must get a list. I'll be glad to send you a list. I set aside this month as Appreciation Month. I've heard from a few of our listeners in appreciation for our service here over the years on the radio, and I appreciate that. God bless you. But if you want to write a letter of appreciation or state it in your Christmas card or whatever, you have another week to do it. And so next week will bring to close Appreciation Month. And if you write to me, let me know you're praying for me. Then you do so. We'll be making our home over near Livonia, Georgia. We have a little home over there on Lake Hartwell. And we bought a lot there some uh, five, six, maybe seven years ago. And over a period of time, we've played it off and built us a home there. And we right on the lakefront, have 150 feet of uh, water and a nice location. We'll be making our home there, I hope, until Jesus calls us home. I don't have in mind uh, pastoring anymore. I may supply, fill in for somebody, but I'll be doing evangelistic work as God opens the door, supply work, or fill in work, or whatever, as God opens the door and as the Lord wants me to do so. I'll be available as long as I can breathe, as long as I can preach. I'm going to exalt Jesus. I'm going to uh, fight the devil. I'm going to fight him, kick him as long as I got feet. I'm going to bust him a fist as long as I got a fist. And I'm going to fight him as long as I got teeth. And whenever I lose my teeth, I'm going to gun him until I die. I'm not going to let him rest. And so you can rest sure of that. I want you to be praying for me. And the Lord willing, next Sunday morning, I'll be giving you my mailing address. My mailing address will be in Livonia. We'll be about, we're about eight miles out of Livonia, over on the lake. And I'll give you my mailing address in crossing Highway 85, going north on Highway 85. Uh, if you cross, I don't plan to drag my furniture around anymore if I can get by without it. And uh, so uh, I, I want you to pray for us. We love you. I wanted to stay here as long as God let me live. But I uh, talked about it, prayed about it, grieved about it talk to you people about it for some um, several, several months, but it didn't work out like I wanted it to, and so I'll be bidding you goodbye next Sunday night and be on my way to do my ministry wherever God opens the door. I do covet your prayers. May God bless you as we sojourn for him. Mama Sue has been faithful over the years in my pastorate. She haven't missed over half a dozen full Sunday services in more than 40 years. She's been a real faithful preacher's wife in helping and standing by in my ministry. And I thank God for her. And they're the unsung heroes in the preacher's ministry. And when we come to the judgment seat of Christ, I just want to step back and let the Lord reward her if that's possible, not, not me necessarily. Because she's the one that's been so faithful and standing by, conscientious, helpful, and doing what she could. And many times she said, I wish that I could play an instrument like uh, my daughter or, or done something different in the church. I said, honey, you've done your part and you've done it well. You've done what you could and that's all God expects out of you to do what you can do. God doesn't expect out of you to do what you can't do. She's done what she could, been faithful in doing so, and she needs a little uh, relief and rest from under the pressure of the pastorate. And that makes it a little easier for me to go, knowing she needs uh, some relief and rest. I, as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't matter. But uh, that's the way it'll be. And next Sunday we'll have a large attendance. Uh, my son just mentioned the reception next Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock here in the auditorium. Uh, we have some visitors coming here. One family I know is going to come in and stay overnight to be here in the service Sunday morning. And so we'll have a good attendance next Sunday. If you can come back and fill out church next Sunday, we we'll certainly appreciate it. If you're in the radio listening audience, if you come and be with us next Sunday, we we'll are certainly be glad to have you. May God bless you. I want you to take your Bible today and turn to Luke chapter 2. I want to read a few verses found there. 
Remember, my mailing address now today is Virgil Edwards, Post Office Box 501, Athens, Georgia, 30603. Now, the church will continue on with the Sunday morning broadcast, but I'll be out of the picture after next Sunday morning. And the new pastor will be, of course, the speaker uh, in my place after next Sunday morning. And I hope the church will be able to keep the broadcast through the kindness of the good fish of the radio station. I feel like we will. That's a good open door, a chance to get out the gospel and do mission work and reach our shut-ins. And I hope the church continued on until Jesus comes. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. It came to pass in those days that went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenus was governor of Syria. All were to be taxed, everyone to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea on the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child, so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished, they should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the end. Now I want to read one of the verses of scripture of my text today, and it's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15, page 1237 in my Bible. It says, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. I'm speaking today on this subject, God's gift in the manger. You notice the Bible said they placed this babe in a manger. That was God's gift. The Bible said it's God's unspeakable gift. And I want to mention today how that we can truthfully say he's God's unspeakable gift in this manner. He's God's unspeakable gift in the manger. It speaks because it speaks of the faithfulness of God. We may prove unfaithful, but God is faithful. It says in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bring forth a son. And God was faithful in seeing that done, a virgin giving birth to a child. The infidels, the atheists, agnostics, all uh, hate that verse of Scripture because they want to change it to a, a young woman, any kind of young woman. But God said a virgin would conceive and bring forth a son. God saw that that happened. And the cry concerning this babe by Isaiah, he said, He is the rock of ages. Haggai said, He is the Zai of all nations. Solomon said, He's the rose of Sharon. He's the altogether lovely one. Zacharias said, He's the king of all the earth. John the Baptist said, He's the Lamb of God. Paul said, He's the Lord of glory. Simon Peter said he's the Prince of Life. John said he's the Word of God. The angel said he is a Savior. And the Father said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. So God's gift in the manger here is spoken for us in God's faithfulness from just what I, I've just uh, commented on. Secondly, God's gift in the manger speaks of the knowledge of God. See, God is omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent. God knows all things. And here we find God incarnate in the flesh. Later on the other day, and said, Preacher Edwards, how in the world can uh, Jesus be uh, God and be called the Son of God? Well, he is God, and he's called the Son of God. Christ is God, and God the Father is God. God the Holy Spirit is God. And you only have one person, but three distinct personalities. You have God manifested in three distinct personalities, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, my Father and I, we are one, Jesus said. So here you have God incarnate in the flesh. Now the Bible said he was be born in Jerusalem, in Bethlehem. Why? Why was he born in Bethlehem? Now, he could, could he have been born in Jerusalem? No. Could he have been born in Nazareth? No, no. Could he have been born in any other place in Israel? Oh, no. 
There's two Bethlehems in Israel. One little small Bethlehem, but always it referred to the place where he was born as Bethlehem of Judea. About five miles out of Jerusalem. I've been there many, many times where Christ was born. And he was born in Bethlehem, Judea, because the prophet Micah said he would be born there. And God can't lie. Every word of God is fulfilled in jot and tittle. And God cannot lie. If you can find one lie or contradiction in the Bible, you might want to throw it away. But you can't find it. In Micah chapter 5 and verse 2, But thou Bethlehem, Ephrathah, thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruled in Israel, whose going forth have been from everlasting. So Micah the great prophet said there's coming a time when a virgin would give birth to a child, and that child be born in Bethlehem of Judea. I don't know whether you ever thought about it or not, but let me pass it on to you because of the idolatry pertaining to mirology and so forth. Nowhere in the Bible do you find where Jesus ever called Mary mother. He respected her. He referred to her as woman. Nowhere did he himself personally call her mother because God don't have a mother in the sense we have a mother. God only used Mary to place Jesus on the earth. That's it. And she was just as much a virgin after his birth as before his birth. And he never said, this is my mother. He said, behold the woman, behold thy mother. He didn't say, my mother. He didn't say that through, he failed to do that through disrespect, but God don't have a mother. That's why today you have these superstitious people, feel why idolatry going around. Somebody said, I see a shatter of the Virgin Mary on the wall. Or there's a, uh, look like there's a statue of the Virgin Mary crying. And, and all that stuff, that's the filthy rags of Rome. That superstition, that's idolatry, that's something God hates with a passion. Are you not to worship uh, any prophet? You're not to pray to any prophet, whether dead or alive. You're not to pray to any so-called saint, dead or alive. You're not to pray to the Virgin Mary. God said you to pray to the people. A lot of them don't believe in hell, but they will someday, I'm sorry to say. But they don't believe Jesus is God. They don't believe in Christmas. They have poor, pitiful, blinded people that's going to a place they don't believe in when they die. And then by telling what the Lord has done. And Luke chapter 2 verse 17, And when they had seen it, they made known abroad, which has told them concerning the child. So they told about the child. And Christmas time is a good time to tell about Jesus and tell people why you celebrate Christmas. Number three, they marveled at what they saw. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 18, all they heard and wondered of those things which were told them by the shepherds and marveled. You ought to marvel at the precious things the Word of God tells about Jesus. Marvel and praise God and bless the name of God for it. Number four, they meditated on the fact that Christ was born. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 19, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Meditate on them. Mary kept them in her heart and meditated upon what the angels said and what the prophets said about the things pertaining to Jesus, the Son of God. And then you can celebrate Christmas by praising and glorifying God for the things He's done. In Luke chapter 2 and verse 20, the shepherds returned, glorified and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as was told unto them. When you sing about Jesus, as the choir did this morning, sing about his birth, talk about it, uh, you need to be praising God and glorifying God at this particular time of the year. Many of us have seen a lot of Christmases in our time. And we never know whether we see another or not. Some of us only seen a few. Some of the happiest days of my childhood days were back when I was a little boy, a little country boy, a poor boy. We didn't have very much. My precious mother, God bless the sweet members of her, she's in heaven today. She would try to fix up a little Christmas tree, tie some red ribbons on it, some white bows, and, and strain popcorn, and put that popcorn on that Christmas. She didn't have any lights. In fact, didn't have any electric power in the house. Used lamps. And she had to rig up a beautiful little Christmas tree with string popcorn and uh, beautiful red paper and blue paper and 
how she had fixed it up, and that was a beautiful Christmas tree. I'd like to have one of them today and preface a lot of these you see. My mother's so sweet to do that. She wanted to do it. It's Christmas time. Cook some cakes. And then we'd always place our little box out, uh, whatever we put up, sometimes two weeks ahead of time. Just couldn't hardly wait for Christmas. Christmas time came around. We got a little candy, some nuts, apples, oranges, maybe a few raisins, and we'd get one toy. And every Christmas, I'd want to get me a little, I wanted a blank pistol. And I'd have a little blank pistol in my uh, little Christmas box. And we were so happy. We didn't have much, but we enjoyed it. We appreciated it. Now, people have so much today, children have so much today, they have Christmas 365 days a year, so they don't appreciate anything much. They got so much junk, you can't move around in the room for running over it, and they don't appreciate it too much. If they just have one little toy, they appreciate them more than all that money you put on your charge card, of the, that bought on the charge card to fill their room for a lot of junk and things that they'll kick around for a day or two, and that'll be it. If they just had one nice little toy, they'd appreciate that more than all that other stuff that you can't move right in the house for running over. And it's just they have so much, they don't appreciate it anymore. You can eat coconut cake until you won't enjoy it too much. You can cook, eat steak until it don't taste like steak sometimes. And you can feed your children so much 365 days out of the year and, and buy for them and buy for them. Buy when Christmas time, but it don't mean a thing in the world. It's got more junk to stumble over in your house. More stuff to drag around, and Mama's got more bills on a, on a card that's where she bought on the credit, and Dad's got to try to work a little harder to pay for it. And it, it, it's sad the way sometimes we celebrate Christmas. You know that, to try to celebrate it. But I was little, we were happy. We danced around that little old Christmas tree and got our toys, and we just had a ball. In fact, the minute we're so anxious to get up, uh, for on Christmas morning, we got to put her clothes on and walk around her underwear, a little union suits. We looked like little elves walking around there. But we enjoyed it. I mean, we were happy. Wonderful. Mama was cooking some good sausage in the kitchen, cook, uh, cutting that coconut cake. Uh, and it was good, Brother Camel. Brother Barrett, I'll tell you, it was a good day. Sure was. Amen. A lot of people don't know how to enjoy Christmas anymore. All right, now, number four. The babe in the manger speaks of the love of God. The babe, brother, is God's gift in the manger. Speaks of the love of God. For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in shall pray for the everlasting life. That shows you the love of God. What was seen in that manger that day tells you God so loved the world that he gave. See, God gave the greatest gift that's ever been given. When he gave his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come to the sin-cursed earth and there uh, die on the cross. I'll tell you, something bad seems like this day and time. I'm not, try not trying to be a pessimist. I'm not trying to pour salt into my message. But around Christmas time, things come up like that the mess over yonder in, uh, uh, in the Middle East. And uh, those soldier stages, poor stages, bless their hearts, are getting drowned there, going back to the ship. And... And things like that grieve you. And it looks like a lot of things like that happen around Christmas many times. I was in World War II. I spent one Christmas in Italy. Uh, there in a, on an old pup tent, in a mud hole. Uh, there fighting my, for my country, fighting the Germans in World War II, that Purple Heart Valley. And uh, I, I, we, we kind of fixed us up a little Christmas and enjoyed it. But that was kind of sad for us. I couldn't be with my family. And a lot of families today can't be with their loved ones that's over there. Uh, now in um, Saudi Arabia. And it's sad. It breaks our heart. I wish we could all be together this Christmas. We're living in perilous times, the momentous days. And this thing is fast winding up. The end is soon coming. And I'll tell you, this world is in a terrible mess today. Now, I'm not a pessimist. I'm a truthist. Look at the mess Russia is getting into over yonder, falling apart. Just surmise that the hard dug cool over there gets back into power and the military gets back like it used to be in Stalin's days. That'd be something, would it? When they had democracy in there for a year or more. This world's in a terrible, terrible mess. And if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, how thankful you ought to be that you know him, that he's your savior and you can still celebrate and praise God and rejoice in your heart because you know it. It tells about the love of God. The love of God speaks of 
giving up of ourself and all to God, giving up our sins, bad habits, and and giving men uh, good gifts one to another. Now the wise men, they gave some gifts when they came there to find the baby. In Matthew chapter 2 and verse 11, And when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary's mother and fell down and worshipped him. And when they opened their treasures, they presented him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now these wise men came from Saudi Arabia in that area around Iraq over there. And they came about 500 miles across that desert because they seen a star and they came to find out what it was all about. And because the Bible said a star shall spring out of Jacob and they found that in the Bible and they knew there's something unusual. And they came all the way across that desert and they brought some gifts. Now we don't know how many they were. We just surmised they were three because there were three different kinds of gifts. We kind of believe that. And, but they brought three kinds of gifts. They brought gold, which speaks to the deity of Christ. They brought um, frankincense, which speaks of the suffering of the body, the humanity of Christ. And they brought mirth, which speaks of the death of Christ. So when they brought those three gifts, gold, frankincense, and mirth, there they honored the deity of Christ, the life of Christ, and the death of Christ in those three gifts. And then the God told them, the angels told them not to go back and see Herod to bypass Jerusalem and go back to the Middle East. And that's uh, the Far East, and, and they did not merely the Far East, but somewhere to the Middle East, over about 500 or 700 miles away. But those gifts that speak of these things. And then, of course, God's given the angel speaks of salvation, forgiveness of sin, regeneration, new life cleansing of sin and the blessed hope. That's what he speaks of. Then again it speaks of, the manger speaks of peace and goodwill. That is God's gift in that manger. Peace with God. Peace of God. Peace with our fellow man as far as possible. And peace on earth someday. That'll come. So you can have the peace with God by getting saved to stop your warfare against it. Or you have the peace of God deep set of peace in your heart. And you can't have peace with your fellow men, some of them. And then that's coming a peace one day on the earth, known as the great utopia of the millennium, and that's given the future. And then God's given the major speaks of the coming glory of God. The Bible said there's a star coming out of Jacob. Numbers chapter 27, and verse 17, I shall see him, but not now. I shall behold him, but not now. There shall come a star out of Jacob. These wise men uh, realized something uh, supernatural had taken place. And then it speaks of the star of Bethlehem. The Bible said when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men to the east, to Jerusalem, and said, Where is he that is born king of Israel? For we have seen his star in the east and come to worship him. And the star came right over the house where it was at that time, and they knew that was a spot. Not only that, but the Bible tells us he is the bright and the morning star. The Word of God says in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, I have, I, Jesus sent my an angel to testify to you these things in the church. I am the root and offspring of David, the bright and the morning star. See, the, the bright and morning star appears just before daybreak, and that's the type of the rapture. Jesus will come as the bright and morning star, and then he, after the tribulation period, is coming back down the earth as the son of righteousness, as he tells us in Malachi, the last chapter, that's the beginning of the day of the millennium. Son of righteousness. Malachi chapter 4, verse 2, But on you that fear my name shall the son of righteousness rise with heels in his wings. You shall go forth to grow up as cast as stall. Thank God for the gift of God in the manger. The Bible says it's God's unspeakable gift. I'm going to tell you a little story. I've told it in this church many times. Probably never get a chance to tell it again, but it's always precious to me at Christmas time. I might not tell it exactly like it is, but it's a true story. Many years ago, there was a preacher visited a prison. He sat there on the platform by the, the warden, and uh, the warden said, uh, you see number 49 out there? He said, yes. And you see the horrible look on his face, how downcast he said, yes, I see that. And he said, oh, that man is put in here for the rest of his days. 
and he's a hard, mean criminal to handle. He's one of the worst. Uh, he said that seven years ago, that seven years after that, the same preacher went to this prison, and the warden said, uh, Preacher, said, you remember me telling you about number 49? He said, yes. So let me tell you something happened. He said, here some time ago, one cold Christmas morning, it was real cold, wind is blowing, so I left the war, left the prison to go home to have my Christmas with my family. They're standing on the outside of this cold prison wall with a little girl. She's barefooted. And she had no coat and had ragged clothes. And uh, she had a little something in her hand. And said tears are running down her cheeks. He said to her, said, what are you, what are you doing out here a day like this? You freeze to She said, sir, are you the warden? He said, yes. She said, my daddy's in there, and said, uh, I, I want to see my daddy. So mother died the other day, and little brother died, and said, I want to go in and tell daddy about it, and I want to see daddy. He, he said, you can't go in there, little girl. You can't do it against the rules. She began to cry. I said, if, if, if your little daughter, daddy was in there, and uh, she wanted to get in, but you refused to let her in, and he broke down the whip and said, I've seen that you get in there. He carried her on the inside of that prison and carried her to a dad. When a dad saw her coming, he said, Nettie, what, what are you doing in here? Get out of here. you got no business in here. But she came up and put her arms around that hardened criminal's neck and wept said, Daddy, I had to see you on this Christmas. said, I brought you a little Christmas present. said, you know, Mama passed away. And said, little brother, said, you love little brother. said, he died the other day. And said, Daddy... Before they buried him, I took some scissors to cut off a, a, a little clip of his hair off the top of his head. And I have it here in this paper, and I wanted to bring it to you. It says, the only thing I have to give you for Christmas is a little string of hair from little brother's head. And he showed it. She showed it to her dad, and he began to weep. He cried, and it broke his heart. And uh, he said later on, whenever... Uh, the man visited the prison to give the preacher. The warden said, uh, I want to show you something. 